Hi there, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can compute monthly and daily averages in Power BI. So you have a report, you have a metric that you're trying to monitor, and you want to see, okay, if I'm looking at the given period, how much am I generating an average in each month or in each year? Now, to do that, let's look at a sample report. So we have this report here where we're looking at our total sales values by year, by quarter, and by month so we see the value generated in 2021 see how that breaks down the quarter and how that breaks down in the month what we would like to do is to say okay we're looking at 2021 this 484,000 years has a total sales generated in 2021 but on average how much are we generating each month is it at 50,000 a month is it 4,000 a month is it 40,000 a month that's what we would like to do so we're basically going to be saying okay all these numbers here Take the average of this value and report it for 2021. Come to 2022, take all of the numbers for each month, take the average of that and report it for 2022 and so on. Now, how you might do this is to create a new measure and let's call our measure average monthly sales. And it, the first idea that might come to mind is to say, let's divide the total sales by the number of months in the year, which is 12 months. And so if we put that in our visual, what we get is this. So we get average monthly sales for each month. So this is telling us, okay, if we take this value and we divide it by the number of months, we get 40,000 on average in each month, which is fine. But there's something wrong with this calculation. And what's wrong with the calculation is that we've hard coded this value of 12 here. And that means if for any reason, let's say in 2021, we typically don't open in August. So in the year, we typically don't open in August because we have um, holidays, right? Where we are located, most people go on vacation and we don't make a lot of money selling. So we decide to close the shop in August. In that case, the number of months that would have been running would be 11 months and not 12 months. But we've hard coded this 12 and the 12 will be spread across all the months. So how do we then make sure that what is being computed is actually the number of months for which um, there was a transaction, right? And not just um, when, just not just the total number of months in the year. Now, when you're having to do calculations like this, averages, sums, and you want to consider, you know, subsets of the data, or you want to consider a different level of detail, then you need to look into using those iterator functions so that those functions that have an x at, behind them so average you have average x sum you have some x mean you have mean x max you have max s and a couple of other ones so in our case here since we're looking at average monthly sales the function we'll be looking at is the average x now what does the average x function do as you can see on the screen it says calculates the average of a set of expressions evaluated over a table so it's going to calculate the average of something that has been computed over a table. So the two arguments it expects is what a table and an expression to be computed for each row of this table. Now, what's the table? The table is what would form that level of detail that you are interested in. So in our case, the table is what is supposed to be a table that can say, okay, since we look at monthly sales, how do we get a value for each month, right? A table that can give us a value for each month. We don't need to go and create a table for a, a table that contains one single column for each month. All we need to do is to use a function to generate that table within the measure. And that function is called values. So what the values function wants is if I give the values function our month column, right? Let's say our date, month, name, column. The values function is going to generate so when the, when the column name is given, it on a single column table of unique values. So to take the values in my month name, generate only a table with each row having a single month. So now I have my values column, my table, um, my table given to average x. Now I need to give it the expression. So yes, go for each month. What do I want you to compute before computing the average? I want you to compute the total sales. I wanted to compute the total sales for each month. After you've computed the total sales for each month, then compute the average. 
And so when we do this, maybe we should just do this in a different measure so we can compare the results. But right now, we're still editing the measure, and you can see nothing changed, right? We got exactly the same thing as we have before because it's the same measure. And that's because every month of the year, we actually have values, right? In this case, every month of the year, we actually have values. But what we've basically done is we've defined the granularity of the calculation for our monthly, for our month, and then the granularity for our, for, and the measure that we want to compute. We can basically take this pattern, I will just copy this and say, I want to create a new measure now, this time around for my daily sales, so average daily sales. And what I need to just give the, the measure now, for the value section is again a table that would define the granularity in this case the granularity is what daily the table that would define the granularity of my calculation so in my i have a date table a calendar table and i know that every date in my date column is a, is a value for a single year for a single day so if i give it that column every other thing remaining the same the result of this function should now be the average daily sales that is for each day within the selected period how much are we generating every day so i'll put that in there again as well so this is our average monthly sales and this is our average daily sales so on average we're making about a thousand five hundred twenty twenty one and in 2024 we're now making about two thousand two hundred and this is it this is a measure that you can use anywhere so i can come into this one Look at my total sales by quarter and I'll add my average monthly sales. Let's just take this up here and expand this a bit so we can see the contents a bit more clearly. All right, so we have our average monthly sales, and what we see is okay, we generated 74,000 in Q1 on average, that's what 24,000. So it's taking all these Q1 values are taking the average and then giving you the average. What if we want to look at the daily sales? We take the daily number, we add it in there, and we have the daily sales. Now, this is great, except for one thing. Now, when you look at the monthly, let's come back to the monthly value, and I'll just take out the daily sales for now. So we're focusing just on the monthly value now in here we can see okay 2021 the monthly average is 40 39 50 61 but how is it possible that we have an average of 191 we're looking at the grand total that doesn't make sense and why do we have that let's go back to what we have in the measure so our measure is saying use the month column the month name column to define the granularity of our calculation. And if we look at the content of the month name column, see that the month name column is just a column that contains January to what to December, right? 12 values, nothing else. What is happening is here at the grand total, it's aggregating all of the Januarys, all of the Februarys, all of the March to compute the average. And that's not right. So we need to give this section of the calculation a column that contains a unique value for each year and month combination. Each year and month combination, we need to give it a column that has that unique value. And luckily for us, within, the, within this model, we have a column called year month. And year month has a value for each year and month combination right so instead of 12 months we have 12 months for all the number of years so if we give this column if we use this column now in our calculation call this year months what this now does is even at the grand total it's going to be looking at each individual month within the year and now we are seeing a much more realistic value here so this is now taking January 21, 22, 23, January 22, uh, January 21, February 21, all through to December, then you compute January 22, all through to December 22, 
the next 23 and so on and then when it has all of those values for each month then it computes the average so the key is what having a column that you can use to define that granularity so you want to do monthly daily average uh, monthly daily quarterly bi-weekly weekly once you can have a column that can define that level of granularity then you can compute your calculation so there you have it this is how to compute monthly and daily averages in power bi using the average x function